When you hear the name Zulu, it sends an immediate tingle down the back of the neck. Hollywood images of great Zulu wars and their legendary leader Shaka Zulu quickly comes to mind. But for experienced safari goers, a different emotion and image appears. The homeland of the Zulu, South Africa's KwaZulu Natal province, is the epicenter of one of Africa's most protected and iconic species, the rhinoceros. As rhinos were poached into extinction in most of Africa, here, the tank of Africa made its last stand. Join us today as we explore the land of the Zulu. Jumbo, I'm Bill Ball, and I'm going to be your guide on this episode of Journeys in Africa. And this is Africa. The Africa experience was summed up by Ernest Hemingway when he said, all I wanted to do was to get back to Africa. We had not left it yet, but when I would wake at night, I would lie, listening, homesick for it already. Join us each week as we explore the entire continent of Africa, from the plains of the Serengeti to the heights of Kilimanjaro and all points in between. We'll introduce you to the history, culture, and wildlife of one of the most exotic and extraordinary places on Earth, Journeys in Africa. The land of the Zulu is in South Africa, about midway down the western coast in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. We'll explore four different parks, all under the care of the provincial government. Giant's Castle in the Drakenbergs, Atala, Makuzi, and St. Lucia Wetlands Park along the coast. Being provincial parks makes them the equivalent of our state parks, but oh, what state parks they are. These massive wildlife preserves host some of the biggest game in the world, including several members of the Big 12. The rhino, hippo, giraffe, zebra, and leopard. The St. Lucia Wetlands is a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its unique waterways. Atala is a haven for rhinos and giraffe. Makuzi is home to an antelope found in few other parks, and the Drakenbergs are the guardians of the most incredible paintings by early man. Being in the land of the Zulus requires at least a bit of information on the people. With more than three quarters of the population of the province, Zulus are the dominant tribe here. Though most are now Christians, they traditionally believe in the creator of the universe was Unkulu Kulu, the old, old man. But probably more important than he is, is his daughter that controls the rain. Ancestors are an immensely important part of the faith as they carry out the required rituals. Clothing reflects status and age. Girls cannot wear long skirts until engaged, and animal skins were worn to reflect power, leopard being the cloak signifying a chief. The traditional dwelling of a Zulu was a hut of tightly woven grass surrounded by a wall of branches. Of course, today, the vast majority dress as Westerners do and live in cities in more typical houses. The culture, though, is not lost. The ceremonies, gatherings, and language, one of the official languages of South Africa, is still very much alive. One of those truly Zulu customs still practiced is their dance. When in KwaZulu Natal, make a point of seeing one of these dances performed. The Zulus were, and still are, a powerful force in South Africa, and their dance reflects that. We will start our touring based in Durban, one of the largest and most ethnically diverse cities in South Africa. Our first park destination is a day trip out of this metropolis called the Drakenbergs. Drakensburg Park is one of the most diverse in Africa. It has hiking trails, it has wildlife areas, and it's got great floral displays. But probably it's most famous for its Bushman art. And that's what we're gonna concentrate on today at Giant's Castle. Giant's Castle is located in the northern half of this great mountain range. The Drakenbergs run over 150 miles north to south. The name means Dragon Mountains, a very European designation. The Zulus, though, had another name for it, the Barrier of Spears. Whichever name you use, it is impressive. This mountain-based park, like the St. Lucia wetlands that we will visit later, 
is a UNESCO site. The United Nations Committee members selected places around the world for this esteemed status. They deem these sites are so important to all of mankind that the world must protect them. There are about a thousand worldwide, both natural and man-made. Upon arriving at Giants Castle's Visitor Center, you can get an orientation before you stock up on some drinking water, since it is a moderate 45 minutes to an hour hike to the caves. Keep your eyes open for the reptiles. Look for birds, over 160 species, and small mammals, all of which call this wildlife area home. There is some big game like eland, reedbuck, and bushbuck, but there are no large predators. And don't forget the little guys. There are always some interesting insects there as well. The most fascinating is a medium-sized beetle with an unfortunate moniker, dung beetle. These industrious insects recycle dung of large mammals by rolling them into a ball and moving them to a secure locale where they can lay their eggs inside this strange nursery and they promptly then bury it. As the young larvae hatch, they use the dung as their nourishment until emerging as adults and the cycle begins anew. These are very important members of the sanitation crew and given the right of way on most national park roads. In fact, they are so important to soil nutrition and reducing disease that a study in the U.S. found that the North American dung beetles save American farmers over $258 million a year. Of course, you don't visit Giant's Castle for the wildlife. You come here to see some of the most incredible cave wall paintings in all of Africa. Dating back thousands of years, these paintings depict the people and the wildlife found in this area. There are actually over 600 sites in the park featuring over 22,000 individual paintings. At the main cave here, there are over 500 paintings alone. Giant's Castle is one of the most easily accessible sites in the World Heritage Protected Zone. The earliest inhabitants, the Sands, lived in caves in these mountains for thousands of years before any other people came to this area. The Sands were ultimately displaced from their hunting territory, so they took to stealing white settlers' cattle. That was the excuse the newcomers from Europe needed to launch an attack. The Sands art is a shaman art used to depict spiritual ideals, but they're not a diary of daily life. Ritualistic dancing meant to cure diseases is a regular theme. The eland, as the largest antelope in the world, was considered powerful, so it is the animal most often portrayed. Some of the exquisite paintings date back 8,000 years, or to a time well before the Greeks, Romans, or even the Egyptian civilization. Ironically, the meaning of the cave art was unknown or misinterpreted until quite recently. The art was first recorded by white settlers in the 1850s, but it wasn't until the 1980s that a professor from Witwatersrand University, David Lewis Williams, cracked the code, revealing the art's magical connection. The first time I saw these incredible paintings, I was awestruck. To be honest, every subsequent trip never diminished the thrill at all. These were the paintings that I saw in the history books when I was a kid. Basically coming here, I can live what I learned. This is a full day excursion from Durban, taking three hours drive each way. The hike and ranger's explanation at the site adds three more hours. It is gonna be hard to top a World Heritage Site that is often featured in our history books. Our next park, northwest of the Drakenbergs, just might be able to do that though. Atala. Atala is one of the most northern reserves in KwaZulu-Natal, nearly at the Swaziland border. From Durban, it is a five-hour drive on good roads. For the adventurous, driving in South Africa is not bad. The roads are in good shape and well-marked. There are plenty of gas stations and rest stops, and the traffic flows well outside the big cities. For most, though, hiring a driver or a tour operator can alleviate a major potential stress factor and make the vacation more enjoyable. Atala is one of the few parks within the South African system where private sedan driving is difficult. But don't worry, KwaZulu-Natal has open-air safari vehicle tours of the park ready for you. 
As we near Atala, the landscape begins to transform. The more lush vegetation gives way to plants that thrive in more arid conditions. And then, sugarcane. Sugarcane is actually a member of the grass family. Just think how easy it would be to get the kids to mow the lawn if it was sugarcane. Sugarcane actually grows in warm environments like the northern KwaZulu-Natal province, but cane needs moisture and lots of it. Here the moisture doesn't come from the sky, but well-placed irrigation canals bringing water in from the wetlands near the coast. With the ability to double crop, sugar is big business right around Atala. Sugarcane is the world's largest production crop, with nearly 2 billion tons harvested each year. When the plants have reached maturity, the water supply is cut off and the field is left to dry out. Once dry, the cane is burned to get rid of the leaves and the sugary stalk is gathered up and taken to the sugar processing plant. Atala Game Reserve is a remarkable place, not just because there's nine of the Big 12 here, but because of the diversity of activities that are available. You can do a game drive, you can do a guided walk, or you can have your wedding planned here. How cool is that? If only I could find a bride. Talking about nice facilities, the lodge in Atala is actually rated a four-star property. Now that's not a shocker for private lodges in and near wildlife parks, but government lodges at an affordable price never reach that level of sophistication. That is, except here. The rooms have all the amenities a Western tourist could desire in a charming, but truly African flair. Since the lodge is within the park itself, there is plenty of wildlife in and around the camp to entertain even the most ardent safari goer. The real reason to venture to the far north of this province is the big game, and there is no shortage of that. Established in 1972 to protect the quickly disappearing wildlife at the time, the refuge has many of the Big 12, including hyenas, cheetah, and leopards on the predators list, and rhinos, both white and black, zebra and giraffe, on the big herbivore list. 